Hello, people of the earth, and welcome back to Quick Safe TV. My name is Mike, and this is um, this is the police too. Today, we're going to discuss the RPG system in the game, uh, specifically the the uh, attributes slash skills, uh, and what do they do for you, how do they matter, and perks that they let you acquire and use in the tactical maps. We'll cover every single perk. We'll cover every single attribute, and we'll try to identify which ones of them are useful and not. Um, feel free to tell me in comments what you think, what you personally use. Um, without further ado, let's begin. Oh, one thing. I'm a little bit sick, so it's hard for me to gather my thoughts, but I'll try not to dwindle too, ma too much, uh, too long on things, and uh, carry this thing onwards. Hopefully I can do it in under 10 minutes. Let's go. Strength, um, intelligence, speed, stealth, shooting, negotiation are the skills that we're able to level up on our characters, uh, and each of them gives us, uh, give us perk points. Each first level in every skill gives you two perk points, every subsequent level gives you one perk point. So in total you can have 24 perks, but on a tactical mission you can only use four of them, which means that choosing perks matters, and understanding which ones of them are better or more optimal is very, very important. Let's begin. Strength level 2 gives you access to battering ram and knockout. <clears throat> now, excuse me, battering ram is just a worse version of burglar. There's no benefits to being heard, so when you break a window or open the door, it's not a good idea to be heard as well. It's much better to be silent and um, unheard. So battering ram is just a shitty choice. Um, and if you only have strength um, and no, don't have a point in intelligence, that's the only reason why you should be using battering ram. Overall, it's just a worse choice than a burglar. When you can use burglar over battering ram, always take it. Knockout allows you to knock out the enemy with the uh, with a baton for one additional turn. It's not much more. It's essentially one additional turn. It's double the time in in reality. But realistically, you don't give a shit about something like this if you're not making mistakes. Because a, a classical uh, apprehension um, um, movement um, would be move up to the suspect, stun him with the baton, and in the next turn you apprehend the suspect and continue your movement. So. In essence, one extra turn makes no difference. In a situation where you need to stun enemies for longer, sure, but such situations are... Um, again, if you're not making any mistakes, they're never going to happen. So knockout and battering ram are pretty shit, in my estimation. Um, for... yeah, okay, anyway. Next. The level 2 strength gives us access to jumper. Jumper allows you to climb over high walls and fences. This can be really useful on certain maps, and it can allow you to cut down time or approach enemy from a different factor. Overall, I really like Jumper, but it's not often uh, useful because many maps, most maps don't actually have anything to climb over, which is kind of a problem. But when they do, Jumper is super good. The strength level 3 perk is Atlas. Atlas allows you to carry wounded allies and valuable cargo without um, any penalty. And a penalty is one movement point. In other words, when you carry a box or you carry a wounded character, be that a VIP or your own wounded uh, police officers, you are slowed down by one movement point. Um, that is from 6 down to 5. If your character is well rested when on a mission, so in green, uh, stamina, he will be able to move six points, uh, six tiles on a combat map. With, uh, with, with a box, he will be moving five points. With Atlas, he will remain at six. Now, if he's really exhausted, he will be moving much slower, like three tiles or so, like really low at um, uh, orange exha exhaustion. And uh, then Atlas could be valuable. But overall, first of all, you never really care if your character can move quickly because it's not important. There's no mission where it's necessary and there's no situation when it's useful. Generally speaking, you would rather avoid your people being wounded and being able to carry your people is not an asset because you generally don't want to do that. You want to avoid wounds instead and which makes Atlas almost completely useful, useless. It's my least favorite level 3 perk out of all the trees. Next, intelligence. The first level of intelligence gives us access to burglar and uh, sentry. What is that? Sentry. There you go. Now, burglar allows you to silently open windows and open doors. Very useful. Allows you to find different vectors to the enemy and allows you to easily uh, find additional pathways into the enemy territory or avoid their checkpoints. Sentry is super useful as it gives you around four or five tiles of um, vision or even more in certain situations. It allows you to spot traps from much further and it allows you to identify suspects from much further. Really useful, really powerful ability. The Intelligence Level 2 allows you to get access to Hunter. Now, Hunter 
allows you to identify traps on the map and mark them for your allies. Really important when you're on the map and there's a lot of traps laying around. That's not a lot of maps, but when there are traps, it's really important to have a hunter. And also, it allows you to disarm explosives. Apologies, which is really important when you're on a bomb mission. Being able to disarm explosives is paramount um, to have when you need to disarm the bomb, because without the hunter perk, you're going to have 50% chance to disarm this explosive device. Which is shit. <laughs> because if you fail, you have to restart the mission. And um, Hunter moves it up to 100%, which is super useful. And the Intelligence Tier 3 perk is uh, Awareness. Awareness allows you once, uh, for a character, once per mission, identify and highlight all the uh, suspects on the combat map. Um, it's hard to overestimate how useful it can be. Uh, and even though it's only once... It allows you to quickly get the head, head count of the enemies on the map and understand where they are. It's especially useful on a combat map where the firefight has ensued to understand where the enemy is moving towards or where the enemies are, so you can use your characters and uh, you know position them accordingly. But it can also be useful in the stealth missions to try to understand and figure out where the enemies are, should you proceed to the next room, etc. Like it, it can be really useful um, as a perk, even though it's one shot only. Next, speed. The tier 1 speed gives you two perks, one super useful, one super useless. Now, volley and uh, ferret. Now, let's start with the useless one. Volley allows you to spend three bullets to get a slightly higher chance to hit. Each individual shot has lower chance to hit, but in aggregate, three shots will, slight, will, will slightly be better than uh, making one shot. Let's say it's going to be, instead of making one shot at 30% uh, accuracy, you would be making three shots, success, successive shots, at 20% accuracy. It's a lower chance, but the overall chance for at least one shot to connect is going to be bigger. So volley can be useful in that regard. The problem with volley is that it spends three bullets. And uh, in your revolver, you only have six. Now, every character uh, in the base game has the same revolver. Spending many bullets is a bad idea, because you don't want to be sitting there and reloading. If you have anything that is a better choice in a shooting tree, um, volley is a bad choice. But as a substitute for a basic attack, when you really, really have um, a small chance to hit and you really have to connect a shot, volley can be an okay choice. Now, Ferret is an exceptional choice when you have to fight the enemies in direct engagement and direct combat. Ferret allows you to dodge, well, basically have a higher chance to not be hit by enemy attacks. It's um, especially useful in combination with Chameleon, and both are a necessity. I mean, I would say Ferret is a necessity. Chameleon is a nice addition on a mission where you're expecting to fight the enemy in, um, in, a, in a gunfight. Now, they... Speed, uh, uh, tier 2 perk, is pause, uh, or patience, rather. Patience allows you to spend two action points to get an additional action point, so three action points on the next turn. It's really useful when you plan assault in a room, or when you have to spend your turn waiting for the enemy to advance. But there's an alternative to this. Uh, in the shooting three, it's the interception. So these are two good ways to spend your turn when you're waiting the enemy to come to you. But... There is something better than patience for stealth missions. Uh, but patience can be still useful in situations where stealth is not an option, so it's not a terrible perk. I would say it's okay, but there are better choices. And the tier 3 in speed is athlete. Athlete allows you to move more. Uh, so you move one or even more sometimes. When you move diagonally, you can move more cells in a turn by... Um, basically expanding your movement it gives you plus one uh, per uh, action point spent so you're able to uh, so you're able to um, cover more ground it's especially important when you have to reach somewhere quickly in bomb missions for example or in firefights when you can't really afford to take too long to to go from cover to cover athlete can be an excellent choice overall it's a really good perk because it um, amplifies your movement, it doesn't cost any action points, it's really, really good. It's a solid tier 3 perk. It's not as good as awareness, I'd say. Well, actually, I mean, it's kind of close. I don't want to compare them like this, because I would have to think about a lot of things. Now, okay. Stealth, level 1, allows you, gives you the access to Shadow and Chameleon. Shadow is sometimes useful, but the problem with Shadow is the cost is too great. You spend one action point and then you are able to move next to the enemy without being seen. Notice, not in front of the enemy, but next to the enemy. 
If you literally move in front of the enemy, he will still spot you. But moving next to him, basically on his side, behind him and diagonally um, uh, close to him, uh, will no longer uh, make him aware of your presence. It can be useful in combination with ninja and um, excuse me, ninja and athlete. Uh, this perk can be really good uh, to squeeze into tight spaces where the enemies might be able to find you. It will allow you to avoid them. But generally speaking, you can make do without it. And again, costing one action point is such a pain in the ass because you only have two, right? Spending one on shadow only leaves you with one, unless you have ninja or patience. So overall, not my favorite perk and not a perk I ever had to resort to using or not even a perk that I wish I had. The amount of times where I would be able to utilize it was so, were so few that, honestly, it's not even worth mentioning. Next one is the Chameleon, right? Chameleon is super powerful in combat missions uh, in a firefight. It converts any low half cover into a full cover, allowing you your character to be safer and allowing you to advance more aggressively. Because typically, like just like an XCOM, you want your characters to be in full cover. It's really important. But it's not always possible. And advancing on the enemy can give you certain benefits. Not, not like in XCOM, but here it's also sometimes important to be closer to the enemy. In XCOM you fight for position. In here you never fight for position. So in the original game it doesn't really matter. But Chameleon can allow you to position your characters more frivolously and not being punished for it. So it's a really good perk. Chameleon in combination with Ferret gives you maximum possible protection in um, uh, firefight, uh, in, in, in basically in, in hot combat. In uh, This is the police too. The next perk is the Silencer. This is the stealth tier 2. Silencer is okay, but um, here's the problem with Silencer. You can incapacitate enemies using guns, right, without killing them. But once you do that, they get on a timer and they start dying, you know, slowly, slowly. So silencer makes it so that you can use your gun uh, in a way you would use your taser. But the problem is it's only for one shot. And another problem is that you need for this perk to be really useful, you want to have aimed shot, which is the shooting tier three perk. So overall silencer can be okay. And I use it myself sometimes. But it's not the greatest of choices. There are better options to use. Even just using a taser is a better option. But um, silencer is the only way to incapacitate the enemy using your revolver without being heard at great distance with, let's say, aimed shot. So silencer is not the worst choice. And I honestly think it's a pretty good perk. One shot is sometimes all you need, and it's enough to tilt um, the um, battle in your favor, or rather, tilt the odds of success in your favor, because it's not really a battle, it's still stealth. And the tier 3 for stealth is the ninja. Now, ninja is, honestly, by far, the strongest perk in the game. There is, um, excuse me, there is nothing that comes even close to ninja in terms of effectiveness, in terms of what it gives you. It gives you an additional action point per turn to your character for free, unconditionally, for as long as you remain out of combat, for as long as you are in stealth. So basically, so as long as the enemy does not um, uh, discover you and raise the alarm, you will have three action points. And to basically to, to overestimate the utility of this is impossible. Like. This is the strongest perk in the game for a combat mission because it allows your characters to not only move swiftly, uh, making it so that they essentially make three turns in the time that it takes them to, to, to make two, and it allows them to more aggressively apprehend the suspects and even stun more suspects per turn. So, for example, you could do something like uh, my favorite one-two combo. You could go with one police officer, you could approach, stun, and hide in cover, and with a second police officer who also has a ninja, you could approach, apprehend, move to cover. So you would not leave yourself exposed, and you would not waste time apprehending suspects, right? You would not break your strat, uh, which is super important, super useful. Or you could approach the suspect, incapacitate him, and then incapacitate the other suspect. Having three action points is invaluable, and it's very, very difficult to overestimate its value. Now, the next one is Shooting Tree. Shooting Tree, uh, level one, gives you interception, here and the shooter shooter is here there you go so interception allows you to spend um, your turn uh, in overwatch position 
and if the enemy moves within line of sight of this character or moves uh, you know, even the enemy that you've seen already moves within your line of sight, you will be able to shoot him. And you will be able to also aim uh, where you want to shoot him. So be that torso, hand, leg, or head. You can aim anywhere. Really, really useful. Uh, it's a great way to end your turn, anticipating the enemy. The only problem with it, honestly, is when you do a max range shot, it's 100% useless. And if you have the sentry... Oof, it's such a pain in the ass too, because it extends your vision uh, range. And having the interception in that sense uh, makes it so that you, you take a shot at such a low chance to hit that it doesn't even fucking matter, right? But when you wait for the enemy to move, let's say, uh, out of cover or whatever, or like, there are some situations where it's useful. But it's not as useful as, my, as you might think, basically, in two words, right? <laughs> The next one is um, Shooter, right? Shooter is a great perk overall. It gives you an additional chance to hit, we would say, um, I'd say 10 or 15%, something like this. But it also, most importantly, allows you to ignore cover. So, not having cover is deadly. Like, the chance for the enemy to hit your character when he's outside of cover is catastrophically high. Having Shooter on your guys makes it so that it doesn't matter if the enemy is hiding in cover. Be that low cover or high cover, pointless, right? So, shooter in that regard is, is necessary. It's a mandatory skill to have if you want to kill enemy with guns in a hot firefight. If you're fighting from an ambush, it doesn't matter. But in a hot firefight, shooter is paramount. It's, it's really important to your success. Shooter rank 2 gives you lucky shot. Here you go. If you miss a shot, you fire another shot with reduced accuracy. Uh, it's not the best pistol perk or shooting perk you have, but it's okay. In combination with shooter, it's really, really good. As a, um, with just spending one point on shooting, you can get two great perks, making your character not entirely useless in a firefight. Uh, or, sorry, two perks, two points, right? So you would get, uh, in first you get shooter, and then you get lucky shot. And the next one, the tier three in shooting, is called aimed shot. And it's one of the strongest perks in the game, uh, quite frankly. I would say it's, uh, uh, I would say it's the second or third strongest perk in the game. It allows you to fire at the enemy with catastrophic increase in accuracy. Like, the difference between a simple shot and the aimed shot is so big that, oof, it's, it's insane. It's especially good with uh, silencer, or rather the silencer is especially good with aimed shot. But aimed shot is great choice uh, on any character when you have to participate in a hot firefight. Without aimed shot, killing enemies is a pain in the ass, or e even incapacitating them is a pain in the ass. With aimed shot... You can incapacitate the enemies so quickly that you will be able to uh, actually prevent them from dying uh, before the mission ends. My cat is going nuts. Uh, and it's really, really important because you will be able to um, actually, essentially, you will be able to apprehend the suspects and you will be able to prevent them from firing on you. So aimed shot in combination with ferret is a great way to keep your guys alive. It's one of my favorite perks, definitely. The last one, but not least, really important, really strong, negotiation. Negotiation level 1 has force, surrender, and interrogate, or interrogation, right? So you have force, surrender, and interrogation. Force, surrender, ugh, this one is kinda shit. It's not the worst perk in the history of perks, but it's kinda shit. Um, it allows you to force, to attempt and force the enemy to surrender. The closer you are to the enemy, the higher is the chance that he will submit. The chance is around, the maximum chance is around 70 or so percent. It's not little, but it's definitely not a lot. And especially if you don't have a lot of action points, you would have to move up to the enemy and then force him to surrender. And if it fails, eh, you're pretty much screwed because he will um, raise the alarm, he will attack you, and you will be in, in, in a lot of... Well, the shed will hit the fan in the proverbial sense. Um, and the other one, interrogation. Interrogation is actually really good. Interrogation is like awareness, only you have to interrogate the enemy. In a stealth mission, interrogation is much, much better than awareness. In a combat mission, interrogation is much worse than awareness. Think of it this way. It allows you to pinpoint every, every character on the map, 
It also says it should give you the active objects, but in my experience it doesn't do that. I don't know if it's a bug or not, but in the base game, in the core game that we have available right now, it doesn't do that. Interrogation is a great perk, it's a great addition to a character that plays through stealth, and for your play style, you want to play stealth most of the times, unless you are forbidden from doing so, so interrogation is great. Now. In negotiation level 2, you get Freeze Buddy. This is my third favorite perk, <laughs> or, you know, second, whatever. It's a close uh, tie with Aimed Shot. Freeze Buddy allows you to, with almost 100% guarantee, when you're point blank 100%, when you're two or three tiles away, it's like 95 or 92% chance to force the enemy to, um, to, to freeze for a moment. And this freeze allows you to in, uh, apprehend the suspect and then interrogate him, let's say. It's an effective replacement for Baton, um, Shocker, or Pepper Spray. Freeze Body is just a better version of any of these things because they don't. it doesn't take space in your inventory, but you have to spend a, um, a perk slot for this. Uh, it's my favorite thing because sometimes in the early stages of the game, in the first couple of weeks, you don't have enough equipment for every character. Freeze Body can rectify this and... Um, Negotiation is a great skill to max first anyway, so negotiation uh, first is a great way to go and freeze body is a perfect, uh, perfect, perfect motivation to do that as well. Now, negotiation rank 3, the last perk we're going to cover, but not least, is the... it's called negotiation. <laughs> it allows you to contact the enemy, um, the enemy forces, or, or suspects. It allows you to contact the suspects and begin negotiation for them to delay the detonation of the bomb. In the core game, it gives you five extra turns, and it tells you it, it spends, um, um, excuse me? Spends his turn entirely. Yeah, policeman doesn't spend his turn entirely. It costs you only one action point, to the best of my knowledge. Whether it's a bug or not, I do not know, but that's how it works, and it gives you five additional turns. Super powerful, super useful, but only on bomb missions, of which there are only, well, there are a couple of them. So. On a bomb mission, it's a great perk to have. It's n it doesn't do anything on any other mission where you remain in stealth and you don't have time penalty or time um, restriction. If it ever changes, negotiation, uh, negotiation will become even more useful. But as it stands, it's only useful on bomb mission, but it useful, it very, it really is useful. <laughs> okay, cool. I've said useful enough times. Uh, now. This is how it works in a combat mission. You can only choose four of those. So, in two words, how would you do that, for example? You could do something like this. For a combat mission, you could take Ferret, Chameleon, Aimed Shot, and Shooter. This would make a great firefighter. In a stealth mission, you could do something like Ninja, Athlete, Sentry, and, um, let's say, Freeze Bodies Creatures. Where's the perk? I don't see it. Because I'm blind. What is perk? Here it is. Freeze body. So it would be a great combination. And it will free you spa your, your, spa your inventory space to use uh, stuff, uh, other stuff as well. Or you could use um, Ninja, Athlete, Silencer, Aim Shot. That's also a great combination. A great combination for a trapper, right? So to see traps, you could use Ninja, excuse me, Ninja, uh, Hunter, Sentry, and Athlete. That's a diffusal uh, expert right there. You'll be able to see traps and you'll be able to reach the bomb very quickly. Another great combination for firefighting would be ferret, aimed shot, interception, shooter. So something like this. A combination for, um, let's say, stealth where you have to sneak around and vision is not important. You could go ninja, athlete, burglar and um, interrogation. This is really powerful too. So you see, you can make many combinations which are really good, and you can uh, mix and match. Like for example, you could have pairs of two uh, cops, one of which both have ninja, but one, let's say, has burglar and uh, interrogation, and the other would have... Um, so both have ninja athlete, and one has ninja athlete burglar interrogation, and the other would have ninja athlete um, a freeze body, and let's say sentry. Or he could have ninja athlete, sentry, and hunter. You know, stuff like that. You can mix and match. But in my experience, the best combination for firefighting mission, for, for missions where you actually, no, no, for missions where you have to engage in hot combat, you would have to choose something like ferret is really important, and aim shot. These two are necessary. Everything else is a matter of preference. You could use shooter, 
Honestly, shooter is also necessary, I would say. So this three would be necessary. Aim shot, ferret, and shooter. You could use something like chameleon, something like athlete, something like lucky shot is okay, something like interception is okay. So it's a fourth choice. That's fine too. Okay, so how do these skills actually work? Oh, the one last thing. My top three favorite perks, if it matters to you, are in this in this order. Ninja, um, freeze body, and aim shot. So we have, uh, yeah, ninja, aim shot, and the freeze body is here. There you go. That's the three, my favorite. I think it's the strongest perks in the game, to be honest. Now, in terms of skills, how do they work in the game outside of tactical missions? It's not very hard, and I will make you a small reference list. It goes like this. In, 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 in the level of relevance, they follow this fashion. Negotiation is first, then it's strength, then it's stealth, then it's speed, then it's shooting and intelligence. So first negotiation, second strength, third stealth, fourth speed, fifth shooting and sixth intelligence. Negotiation is used when you command or uh, try to, excuse me, coerce the enemy into doing what you want, uh, do the suspect into doing what you want. It is useful in most cases on calls. Strength is useful in overpowering or hitting the enemy in calls, also really important. Stealth is useful to sneaking uh, to, to the enemy or trying to apprehend the enemy when he doesn't know you're still there, super useful as well. Speed is useful when you have to reach the enemy quickly, or suspects quickly, when you have to run faster, or when you have to chase after someone. So again, really useful. Shooting is useful when you have to kill someone, when it's the only choice left, or when you have to shoot tires, for example, or shoot an object. So shooting is a really useful skill sometimes. But it can be really useful when you just like want to kill left and right. But it's not something that you want to do because you get the experience or, or professionalism penalties for doing that. So it's not something you want to do. That's why shooting is number five. But shooting, negotiation, and strength is honestly used in most, most um, uh, options when you go on calls. They're most useful. Intelligence is only useful when you have to pick lock or defuse a bomb. So they are sometimes useful, but they're very few and far in between. Now... I think that's about it, does it. I wanted to do it under 10 minutes, but it took me half an hour. But I think we covered absolutely everything. I hope I didn't rumble too much. I hope it was useful. Eventually, I would like to remake this video and actually show you how these perks uh, function in game. But I would honestly just, I wanted to get this out there. But for those of you who only started playing the game, I think it would be useful information. And I personally would appreciate just me talking that, listening it as a form of a podcast, as opposed to having a nice video to go with it. Because it will take me fucking... A 30-minute video with nice editing will take me, what? It will take me five days to make, I think? If I don't work 12 hours a day? So, yeah, honestly, this I think it's preferable. So I apologize for quality, and I'm a bit under the weather. Again, as I said, it's a bit difficult for me to uh, make it, but I hope it's serviceable. I thank you so much for watching and listening. Have a fantastic day, and good luck in the game. Bye-bye. See you all later.